So if you guys are anything like me, it feels kind of like a chore to go through YouTube and find tutorials on something that is simple, but everyone makes pretty complicated. Uh, my example is mechanism where you can do five times or processing. I just want to see how to do it. I can learn all the other things on my own, but just show me the basic setup and I'll get it going. So ironically, instead of spending 30 minutes watching a video on how to make this work, I decided to spend three hours to figure it out myself. But with what I learned, I figured I could share it with you guys and maybe turn this tutorial into like a five minute video so everyone knows how to do this fast and efficiently and then whatever you need to learn on your own, you can learn on your own. So here in front of me are five of the main machines that you're going to be using for a five times ore output with mechanism. Uh, you have your injecting factory, purifying factory, crushing factory, enriching factory, melting factory. These are the order that you're going to put them in. And with configurations, mechanism is pretty good about configurating the machines that it's next to on how they should operate. So what I mean by that is if you click on this and you go to your site configuration, you'll see that it's outputting to the purifying factory. And then from the purifying factory, you can see it's inputting from the, uh, what is this called? Injecting factory. And then it's also going to the crushing factory on the right. Uh, one thing too, if you want to automate this, you need to turn um, auto eject on by default it is off like this it will say eject off you just want to go to the top right and turn it on okay so next we need to cover the resources that you're going to need to make these two machines work uh, they both require a gas the the injecting factory requiring hydrogen chloride and then the purifying factory requiring oxygen these two gases can be created by resources that you can find in the world uh, the hydrogen chloride requires salt, which you can use three different types of mods for this. You can use Greg Tech, Mechanism, and Railcraft Reborn. The Mechanism salt, I feel like, is probably the easier one to find. You can find it in riverbeds. And then with the Purifying Factory, it requires flint. Okay, so with both of the resources for both of the factories, uh, all you have to do to get the chemicals out of it is put the resource that you need in the yellow bar on the bottom left here and it will automatically fill up the bar on the bottom. Same with the flint, we'll put the flint over here and as you can see, it's filling up with oxygen. One thing that we need to talk about is if you're gonna go this route, you are gonna need like thousands upon thousands of material to make these work. When you start putting ore in here and it starts, it starts smelting everything, it will eat this up quickly. So I would not recommend doing it this way unless you just had tons of it to burn. What the hell? How are you doing that? So before we get into the production of hydrogen chloride and oxygen, let's go ahead and throw some ore in here just to show you that it will work. Um, in this chest, I have two stacks of raw iron. I also have a platinum ore hammer. Um, these are pretty simple to make and you can use iron, copper, and some other materials. But these are awesome for early game because you can combine them in a crafting bench with the iron ore or whatever ore you want. And it basically doubles the amount of ore that you'll get. So from that we got two stacks of iron dust from one stack of iron ore. And you can smelt these in a factory or in a smelter and it will give you one ingot per dust. So an easy way to double your ore output in the early game. Okay, let's begin the process of getting five times ore. Starting at the beginning, we're gonna go into the injecting factory and we're gonna start with three ore. To begin the process, it requires three ore no matter what it is. So as long as you have three ore, then you can get five times. I know that seems kind of weird, but once this finishes, I'll show you why. So as you can see from the three ore that we put in, we got eight iron shards. Essentially one shard equals one ingot. So when this process finishes throughout the entire assembly line, you'll end up with a profit of five total iron ingots. Okay, we'll do it once again, but we just turned on auto ejection for all of the machines. So this will automatically go through all of the machines processing each step of the way. So as you can see, it just finished. Now it jumped over to the purifying factory where it will turn these into iron clumps. From the iron clumps, we'll go over to the crushing factory. And then from the dirty iron dust goes to the enriching factory, which will turn into regular iron dust, into the smelting factory, 
which will turn into ingots and then we can pump that into a chest to where we get our iron ingots okay so everything finished processing and now we have ended up with eight iron ingots from the three raw iron that we had placed in we have gotten eight iron ingots which gives us a profit of five ingots total so now that we know that it works we have to talk about this this is a thermal evaporation chamber essentially what the purpose of this block is to do is to create brine from heat and water once the brine is created, we pump it out of the back of the machine into a electrolytic separator. From the electrolytic separator, we turn it into chlorine. The chlorine is then pumped into a chemical infuser. On the left side here, we have another electrolytic separator creating hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is being pumped directly into our ultimate purifying factory while as the hydrogen is being pumped into the chemical infuser. The chemical infuser will create... So I know this looks kind of confusing and it's probably because it is, but I spent a lot of time to get this as compact as possible and as simple as possible, and I think I found a very optimal way to do that. So we're going to go ahead and build one of these just so you guys can see step by step on the process you should take to do so. Okay, so in this chest we have all the material that you're going to need for this. For the thermal evaporation unit itself, all you need is one controller, you need three evaporation valves, and then you need 36 evaporation blocks. For heating the evaporation unit, you have two options. You can use a fuel wood heater or you could use a resistive heater. The difference being fuel wood heater requires coal or wood to produce heat and the resistive heater requires energy to produce heat. So whatever is more available to you, I would use that. You'll need two buckets of water, you will need an energy source, you will need two electrolytic separators, one chemical infuser, one electric pump. The amount of cables that you'll need kind of varies depending on your situation, but you'll definitely need at least a couple of each. Okay, so let's build the actual unit itself. The base of it is a 4x4 four four, and then it can be 3 high. So. Okay, and then you're gonna place the controller in the middle, and then you'll want to place two evaporation valves on the side, and then one directly on the opposite side. Then you'll fill in the rest with the actual block itself, going three high. Okay, once you've finished it, it will do like a little redstone effect on the side of it, letting you know that you've completed the build. Okay, before we place anything else down, let's look inside of the controller itself. On the left here, we'll see how much water will be imported into it. At the bottom, you'll see its heat. You want this to be all the way to the right, making the production a lot more efficient. And on the right side, this is where your brine will be stored. All right, let's go over heating. Uh, for heating, it's pretty simple. There's two items you can use to get heat inside of your unit. You can use a resistive heater, or you could use a fuel wood heater. Both of these are pretty good. I honestly like using the fuel wood heater because it is pretty efficient for what you put into it. And the difference is, is the resistive heater will use energy to make heat, while as the fuel wood heater will use burnable resources such as wood and coal to produce heat. And then obviously you'll need some thermodynamic conductors. So this is pretty simple to do. You just place them down wherever. You don't need both of them, but you can use both of them if you like. We'll just connect them for now and then pipe it right into the side of a thermal evaporation valve. And if you look inside, it will actually start producing uh, heat. So you can see the number is slowly rising up, which is great. That's perfect. Uh, so this resistive heater, we will pop down a creative energy cube just to feed it power. Oh, we got to put it on this side. There we go. And there you can see it's starting to create uh, heat the temperature is rising and you can see here that it also uses 40 fe per tick which isn't that bad honestly uh, generators can produce way more than that extreme reactors too can produce way more than that by a lot and then over here we have our fuel wood heater i already have some coal in there and you can see that it's producing heat uh this timer is pretty impressive for what you're putting in there i have blocks of coal but they last forever and they produce tons of heat. And this thing will only be running when it requires heat. I mean, I guess it, 
I guess it's always going to be heating up to keep it at temperature. So in all fairness, these will be running all the time. So whatever you think is more efficient for you, you should use that. All right, so next up on the list is actually producing the brine and hydrogen chloride. So on the right side or wherever you have your valve set up, you are going to dig down two blocks and you're going to place your infinite water source, okay? We need to grab our energy source and we're going to put it right here, okay? Then we will connect our electric pump to the energy source. Then this will start uh, gathering water from the infinite water source. You're going to come out of this with old, our uh, mechanical pipes for water and you'll see it's going to start pumping the water into the, the valve here. And on the left, we should see, so yeah, it's getting water and it's already starting to produce brine. That's great. Now we will take our electrolytic separator and we will place it right below the other valve, okay? Then we will take our chemical infuser and we'll place it directly in front of it. I think it's the best if we face it towards the electric se electrolytic separator. And then we will take another electrolytic separator and set it here. Then we're gonna take some cables and just make sure that these two things have power. And there we go, they're powered up. Okay, actually we need to flip these two around. So this uh, chemical uh, chemical infuser wants to be facing this way, or, uh, the front facing this way. And then we will take the separator and actually se uh, put it the opposite direction like that. Okay. So from here, we will take a mechanical pipe again, and we are gonna pipe it into the top of the electrolytic separator. You'll have to use a configurator to get rid of this connection here. You just shift and right click on the pipe that you want it to disconnect from. And as you can see, it's disconnected. Now this should start creating, why is it doing that? Okay, so yeah, you need to disconnect it on the left side here to make sure that there's no water being fed into this. So we'll place this back down and there's no connection. Perfect. From here, we need to take our configurator and do pull on this to make the brine be pulled out of the evaporation chamber into the electrolytic separator. And as you can see, it's already making sodium and chlorine and we will be using the chlorine. Also, you should note, you need to figure out what to do with the sodium. I just put um, chemical tanks in here to take all of this out. Okay, so now that this is producing chlorine, we need to get the chlorine from here into the chem chemical infuser. So we need to place a pressurized tube on the right side. And one thing that we need to look out for is to make sure that it's taking out the right fluid. As you can see, it's taking sodium and we do not want sodium. So we need to go into the configurator and we need to go to flute or gases, sorry. And then we need to make sure the output is cyan on the right side. So we'll break this and there. Now it's taking out chlorine, which is what we want. So then we'll place another one directly here and it will be pumped into the side of the chemical infuser. And now it's producing hydrogen chloride. And on the left side here, it's already been taking in hydrogen from this electrolytic separator. And from there, it's pumping it into the right side of this chemical infuser. And now we're producing hydrogen chloride. Okay, so now that we have produced our hydrogen chloride and our oxygen, we need to get these two chemicals into our machines. So the purifying factory requires oxygen and then the, oh, these are both purifying factories. The purifying factory requires oxygen and then the injecting factory requires the hydrogen chloride. One thing you guys should do as well is find a way to store extra chemicals just in case you're doing a large amount of processing that the machine back here won't be able to keep up with. So therefore, if this ever requires so much, uh, let's say hydrogen chloride or chlorine, just in case these machines aren't capable of keeping up with the production that you're doing. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is just place your ultimate chemical tank right below, pipe directly into the top of it, and then as you can see, the uh, hydrogen chloride is being pumped into the top of this tank. Then we can come down below and start piping it into the bottom of our injecting factory. So tired of these guys. Okay, so now let's get the oxygen over to our purifying factory using the same setup. So we'll dig down one, break the block below it, and we will just do a nice channel over to the bottom of our purifying factory. 
put our pressurized pipes down. Now, one thing you need to look out for here is you need to make sure that this middle point here doesn't connect with the pipe coming from the hydrogen chloride. So we'll use our configurator, hold shift, and then we will disconnect this part of the pipe. But now there's hydrogen chloride in these pipes, so we need to break these and restart. We'll place our pipes down, and now it's gonna start making oxygen and putting it into our ultimate purifying factor. All right, guys, that should cover everything that you need to know about making five times ore with mechanism in all the mods nine. This works for other mod packs as well. Sorry if this was a bit awkward. <laughs> I'm not really good at making videos, but I figured it's better than nothing. So there you go. If you liked the video, like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.